Kevin, can you hear me? I'm, we're on record, Brian. Yes, I, I took. We're on. We're on record. Good, 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 good. Yeah. So, we, so, we, so we, we, we're talking about getting it right. We're talking about getting it right, and we're talking about foundational issues. Psalm eleven, the verse three. If the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Absolutely nothing. I am glad that the question was not posted to unbelievers, but this question was posted to believers. What can the righteous do? And I just give a scenario of something that has happening in our country, Ghana. And um, personally, I stand in this place and I'm beginning to wonder what is the very foundation of that thing called law? Because even within our traditional and local settings, if I should accuse Kelvin, for example, or Kelvin should accuse me of anything. I am brought in to come and defend and explain myself. I am questioned, but it's as though this whole system is designed to, to depart from even the very basic foundational value systems that should, if it were, should exist within the very fabric, the very crust of society, the very crust of civilization. I am totally lost. I'm trying to figure it out and ask legal people around, explain to me what, what all these conjectures stand for. What do they mean? What do they relate to? And I said that the, issue, the word foundation, actually, um, in the Greek, that word is temelios. In the Hebrew, it's a, different, it's a different word altogether. But it means a substructure. It means a support and undergirding capacity and structure. And that the foundation that a building stands on actually determines the shape, the design of the building. If the foundation is not for a story building, a two-story, three-story skyscrapers, and that thing is attempted to be placed upon that reality of a foundation, the whole thing collapses after a short time or in the process of the building. So it is important that we get the foundations right and we are dealing with the issue of refounding that will return to the one who is the basis, the very foundation and the very cross of Ecclesia. Great. Now, we, I just told you about the Jebus story, Missionary Impossible, which, in which we found this character called Homer. Homer went back, and Homer, Homer went promising PBS um, $10,000. PBS tends up to collect the amount, and Homer is, is screwing for cover because he doesn't have the money. The reality that Feather Dawn was the, 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 the church leader where Homer I think Homan's wife and children at 10 service decided to offer Homer a disciplinary action by sending him on missions. Go to the South Pacific to teach these people about God. Homer knows God in no particular rich way. So he's on the plane. Great, my note is up, but my... Um, my Zoom will take a bit to be up. So let me just be speaking and we will get, we will get to that shortly. So Homer knows no God in any rich particular way, except that he um, has an idea of who this God is. So in his journey, he um, uh, even got the name of Jesus wrong. And he calls, he calls Jesus Jebus. So we say the Jibo story from the Simpsons. He, he jumps on the plane. He is right in the, the uh, South Pacific. He meets Craig and Amy. And he says, what should I do? He says, that, well, teach them a little English and ridicule their beliefs. Teach them a little English and ridicule their beliefs. That I find to be quite strange that if a people who need to know God, who need to discover God, 
will have to discover God. They have to discover God right. They have to discover God in a rich way. But Homer's understanding and belief and all was about Jebus, and he has an idea. So we are seeing this reality um, of the foundation um, um, uh, being understood wrongly, wrong perceptions, wrong forms, wrong shapes, and all of these things have informed the way Christianity has been run, Christianity has been built, Christianity has been formed in the earth. The fourth century, Constantine reality, and we would, we would probably come back to that and see how a lot of things have transfixed themselves and continue to hold their firm grip upon the practices of today, the practices of today. So just permit me, let me just see if I can connect. Let me, let me see if I can connect to this call from the PC and then share my screen. So in a moment, in a moment. So these things have informed our beliefs and, and, and all. So this is what happened. This is what happened to Homer. Homer God gets into the South Pacific and uh, Craig and Amy jumps on the plane and they are returned to base. Homer is interacting with the, um, the elders of the community. And one of the very first thing Homer uh, did was to ask for beer. <laughs> he just introduced the g -boss religion in the environment. When he realized that he was the missionary in the midst and needed to be the standard, he slammed himself to the ground and, 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 started, and started covering his face and all and screaming, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, help me, oh God, oh God, help me. And then everybody, in fact, we had told them earlier that I came here to teach you um, about religion and about the things of God. So when he slammed himself to the ground and started screaming, oh God, oh God, oh God, Everybody also slammed themselves to the ground and started screaming, oh God, oh God, oh God. Wrong perception, wrong action and wrong activities are born. Wrong understanding has informed a very wrong approach to the discovery of Christ in the South Pacific within that story of of Homan. Listen to me, friends. Let me just uh, see. Let me just connect. I'm going to try, Kevin, I'm going to try and connect. And then once I do, okay. I'll disconnect from the phone. Okay. The recording continues. Yes, yeah. just a moment, please. Good. Let's see. Let's see just a moment. It's very interesting how these things do happen sometimes. Okay, so he's taking a bit. We, we still continue our conversation anyway. So that is, that is about Homer, and we are dealing with foundation. Now, when vices had increased within that society, Homer will slam himself to the ground and say, Jeebus, Jeebus, help me, Jeebus, help me. And then everybody also jumps to the ground and be uh, kind of as if they are searching something on the ground. Jeebus, 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 Jeebus. So Homer succeeded in introducing the Jeebus religion. In the book of Isaiah chapter 52, the verse 14, when you read the NIV translation, it says that men, people were appalled at his image, because his image was disfigured beyond any human comprehension. And let me ask this question. Was Jesus disfigured beyond human comprehension when he was on the cross? No. No. So then, what was that referring to? It's speaking to his form, his expression, his manner, 
his doings, the way he's been represented, the way he's been presented. So we really want to reach out and look strongly at the issue of refunding. Once again, my PC is connecting, is connecting. So we want to look at that issue of refunding. Jesus wrongly presented a model before the people. We need to undo the old foundations. Old foundations has to be belief systems. Old foundations has to mean personally, what is it that I have held onto and believe even about myself? One of the things that I would want you to look into is that God is giving, he's bestowing a new and a glorious name for the wrong name that has been given. Being it the individual, being it what we call church, God is bringing in new identity, new definition, and a glorious name. In Isaiah 52, the verse one to three, Isaiah 52, the verse one to three, let me read that quickly. It tells us something. It says, awake, awake, put on your strength, O Zion. Put on your beautiful garment, O Jerusalem, the holy city, the, the holy city. For, for the uncircumcised and the unclean shall no longer come to you because God is doing something brand new with you and I. The uncircumcised, the unholy shall not come to you. Shake yourself from the dust. Arise, sit down. O Jerusalem, loose yourself from the bones of your neck. O captive daughter of Zion. The verse three, for thou sayest the Lord, you have sold yourself for nothing and you shall be redeemed without money. God is doing something new and giving a new identity and bringing new definition to us. God is doing something brand new and we want to embrace that. We want to step into that. We want to experience it. Secondly, um, Jesus stood at the point where John baptized him. And the scripture says that a voice spoke out of the heaven. When a dove had descended on him and the father pronounced that this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Issues of identity, issues of confirmation, issues of affirmation, issues of release. It takes fathers to give permission to succeed. It takes fathers to declare identity. It takes fathers to pronounce destiny, it takes fathers to declare who we are. And so the father, once again, is pronouncing, is declaring, and is speaking very fresh identity and real foundational issues. It is important that the foundation, the old foundations are undone. This is what I want to do. I would, I would just want to have a, a little more there, and I just would want my PC to connect. I just want my PC to connect. I want, um, I want somebody out there. Maybe you can just unmute your microphone and you want to pray over this thing. This issue is a foundation. You want to speak into it because we, we are the ecclesia. The ecclesia is not something sitting out there. We are the ecclesia. We are the expression of God, the extension of him in the earth. So let's have somebody. You want to just pray. You, you want to just pray just um unmute your microphone if it's one minute you, you want to pray um uh, go ahead and do that just go ahead and do that you want to pray just go ahead and do that any of us any of us any of us father we thank you we praise you for this opportunity to gather around your word lord help us to see into why we are gathered why are we gathered at this moment on this call Lord, there are things about the Ecclesia that we need to understand, we need to see, we need to apply. 
as Mark has uh, given to us the issue of returning to you. The issue of let us in the ways that are necessary for us to be able to grasp what your intention was when you created the Ecclesia. Lord, help us to be open to it. Help us to forsake and to abandon former ways that we would hold on to that are not useful in this next stage of revelation and insight. Help us to give ourselves to these things. Help us to give our minds to these things and to give you everything inside of it as you transform us to be those who will receive. Lord, and I, 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 I declare and I decree in this moment that we will express the true image and formation of your son in the earth, that he will be recognizable and that he would be raised. Your word declares that if you would be lifted up, you would draw all men unto yourself. We want men drawn unto you. And we thank you for this precious opportunity to be able to gather around your word. Help our eyes to be able to see it. Help our ears to be able to discern it, our eyes to discern it, our ears to capture it, and that we would apply it appropriately in this hour, in this season. Lord, we're not here arbitrarily. We're not here by accident. Our hearts have led us to this moment. Our hearts have led us to this call. Father, I thank you for the insight and the wisdom and the word that you're giving to Mark in this hour to share with us. And Father, let the communication even be even stronger that we would see it more vividly and we would give our hearts to it more readily. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for such an awesome opportunity to be able to see the Ecclesia in this moment in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Kevin, that's wonderful. Kevin, thank you for standing in. And so I think everybody can see my screen now. I'm not going to touch whatever I touch on my PC again <laughs> so it doesn't go off. So let's, let's set sail. And so this is, what, this is the big question we just look at in the midst of the challenges. Friends, I want to encourage you. Several years ago in my life when I was discovering God, I, had, I, wrote, an, I wrote a letter to a pastor in, uh, I think it's somewhere in Tuttlesville, um, um, Florida, he's called Danny Daniels, Agape Church. I remember that very well, Agape Church. And uh, Danny um, was this man who actually opened my eyes to healing, healing in the soul and several things. And one of the things Danny taught me by the tapes and the communication he sent to me several, several, several years ago was this issue of taking note and recording and identifying the grounds that must be cleared. I think it will just be good to identify those old foundations, belief systems, and go back and confront them and ask the Lord to remove them. So this was a slide we we're on when we had the glitch. God is giving a new name, God is giving a new identity, and God is speaking concerning the Ecclesia again. Let's move further and look at the imperatives, and I'm going to run through this in a bit. The very first imperative, if we return to the foundations and have to build the Ecclesia right, and I'm using build Ecclesia right as a misnomer in that Jesus says, I will build my ecclesia. One of the things that we will have to clearly be confronted with is the issue of legality and compliance. Legality and compliance to the foundation. Legality and compliance to the foundation. I want us to identify something in Matthew chapter 7, the verse 21 to 23. It says, not everyone says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my father in heaven. Many will come, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, we, we um, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, done many wonders in your name? They will ask, the verse 23. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice 
lawlessness. Very, very powerful um, passage. Many will come to me and say, we have done the very things that look like God, that behaves like God, built like God, expresses itself like God. And Jesus says, I am totally clueless about your work. And so if we want to give expression to destiny, life, to purpose, if we want to give expression to, um, if, if I am a leader in any capacity building the ecclesia, whether the ecclesia is expressing itself in that form of an office activity where I've, I've been able to pull a few together and, and we are educating ourselves in the things of God and we are creating impact within our environment and it's, it's, it's even going wider. I want to remain legal and I want to be compliant because if not, there are consequences. I never knew you. Just look at the expression. I never knew you. I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Let's look at this imperative. Issues of legality and compliance. Issues of legality and compliance. The building of the ecclesia must be compliant with kingdom legality. Jesus is saying, but he, does, but he who does the will of my father in heaven. Pay attention to that. The will of my father. And this father is the father who is in heaven. There are many earthly fathers. If I say earthly fathers, I'm not even referring to biological fathers because one of the things that have brought a great twist in terms of how ministry is done, how it, the church is expressed has been the issue of father figures. Many of them good. Many of them have brought great impact and rich intense impartation into individual lives and other ministries expressing themselves. But what we don't want to do is to follow the father who is in the earth by that way missing the will of the father who is in heaven. Jesus said, call nobody father, for you have one who is your father and he is heavenly. He begins to define the DNA thing that must be working in order for kingdom legality to be rightly applied which is our father who is in heaven. We are not saying we should not regard and give honor and respect all of those things scripture speak about are the things we ought to immerse ourselves in in giving great regard and great honor and celebrating grace and all. But the will of the father who is in heaven is that which must be followed in building the ecclesia. So it means that it must conform to grand plan. It must conform to the rule, the very will of God. It means that whatever I do must conform to the call and purpose of God for me, not, not what is determined by um, somebody for me, not what is demanded by my, my wife, my children, um, ministry organization. One of the things that have vaporized great graces and divine design has been this issue of a certain type of organization and you cannot depart from it. In fact, in Ghana, in certain places, immediately you begin to do um, uh, things that look a bit contrary. You are regarded as disloyal. You are regarded as disloyal. You are, disregard, you are regarded as disloyal. So we want to really be a people who are legal, not a people who are loyal to men, but um, not conforming to God. So it means he who does the will of my father means legitimized to do, to do, hinge on obedience to the will, accurately perceiving and doing, or accurately perceived and done. He who does the will of my father, let's pull up. Legality and compliance. It speaks of the first principle we just look at is the issue of it must, be, it, must be, it must follow kingdom legality, the will of the Father. The second thing is it must be impregnated with divine seed, the seed of copulation. That which is born of spirit is spirit, that which is born of flesh is flesh. 
So Jesus used this expression. He says in the verse 22 and the verse 23, look at what Jesus says. He says that they said, Lord, Lord, we have we not prophesied in your name? Cast out demons in your name and done many wonders in your name. We raised the dead, we healed the sick, we organized big meetings, we had great following, we had small following, uh, our meetings did not grow, and all of those dynamics placed them in. And yet we had we had rich, intense impartation, and uh, we never got impartation. We this miracle, that miracle, that one. Jesus says that I never knew you. That word knew or know, it's used within one of the expressions, an idiom by the Jews to express um, the intimacy that exists between a man and a woman. Jesus is literally saying to like a woman who shows up to the beloved and says, honey, I am pregnant and I'm very excited about this. And the Jesus, who is this honey, says that you are pregnant for who? Miracle for who? Big, small, very impartational. For who? Who instructed this? Who impregnated it? Who dropped his seed of copulation in this? Jesus says, you are actually equivalent to a law unto yourself. The word is you practice lawlessness. So we want to be um, um, compliant. Look at the word lawlessness. And that word in the Greek is anomia. And it speaks of to be ignorant. It speaks of to be ignorant of the law. So these people are building, they are establishing, this thing is happening, but they are totally oblivious to the very requirements of God. Very, very detrimental. It means contempt and violation of the law. It means contempt and violation of the law. It means contempt and violation of the law. Total disregard for the standards of God. I will build my church, but they are building. We did miracles in your name. It means somebody who is ungoverned, unruly person, an evil doer. Jesus said, you are one who practice evil. You are an evil doer. It means to miss the mark. That word is sin, to miss the mark. You miss the target. You fail to hit right on point. Now, it also means to be a law unto yourself. To be a law unto yourself. This one knows no God in any particular way. The Jibba story comes to mind again. Now, buried in Jesus' statement is a very strong reality for us that he desires and requires that we know his law. He desires and requires that we know his law. We live in the place of his speech, his declaration. I tell you plainly, I tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away, away from me, evildoers. You who practice lawlessness, Jesus said. Final imperatives we are looking at concerning um, refounding. And I'm looking at this scripture again. Look at it from the message translation. Knowing the correct password, say master, master, for instance, isn't going to get you anywhere with me. What is required is serious obedience, doing what my father wills. What is required is serious obedience, doing what my father wills. I can see it now. At the final judgment, thousands strutting, strutting up to me and saying, Master, we preach the message. We bash the demons. Our God-sponsored projects had everyone talking. And do you know what I'm going to say? Going to say, you missed the boat. All you did was use me to make yourselves important. You don't impress me one bit. You are out of here. Very interesting. So we want to ensure that our lives, purpose, we can go back to God and discover. I think I read a story of um, the late Kenneth Hagen, who, after several years of ministry, um, went to God and sought the Lord. And um, I think that was about 15 years or 20 years in ministry or so. Sought the Lord. God, what next? I've seen it all. I've seen the miracles. I've seen that. 
God says, anyway, I never sent you to go and do those things that you did. Almost like saying you're a lawless person. He said, I didn't call you in that capacity in which you walk in and you exercise. I called you a prophet and a teacher or so, something like, something like that the story says. It's important that each and every individual, we keep going back and plugging in and finding out about the Father's will for ourselves. Me, I must do. You must do. All of us must do. Every one of us. Because any of us can miss the boat, can miss the mark. Final imperatives. Let's look at two sources of building or two sources of a building trust. And um, on that note, we're going to end. We're going to read about Saul and we're going to see how Saul enacted a process of reaching back into the things of God, which was totally illegal. Let's look at the story from 1 Samuel chapter 28, the verse 3 to the verse 7. It says in the verse 3, Now Samuel had died, and all Israel lamented for him and buried him in Raman, in his own city. And Saul had put the mediums and the spiritists out of the land. Then the Philistines gathered together and came and, and camped at Shunem. So Saul gathered all Israel together, and they encamped at Geboah. When Saul saw the army of the Philistines, he was afraid, and his heart trembled greatly. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord did not answer him, either by dreams or by Urim or by the prophet. It's very interesting, this verse. Let me just chip it in. It appears to me that those days when men want to inquire of the Lord, they literally want to go and sleep and say, let me see what God will say to me or through the prophet. And through the priest, all of these three things, God never responded to Saul. The verse 7. Then Saul said to his servant, find me a woman. Find me a woman who is a medium, very qualified. Um, the woman is qualified. Find me a woman who is a medium that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servant said to him, in fact, there is a woman who is a medium at Endor. Now, in the Bible, woman symbolizes um, a number of things. Two of them, I want to mention quickly, or uh, four of them. One of them is the woman represents the church. You know that in scripture. You see that even in the book of Revelation. You see that in Ephes uh, the book of Ephesians. Number two, woman in a negative sense represents the false church. Then, in the scriptures, the woman also represents the Holy Spirit. And then, in a negative sense, it represents a false spirit, an evil spirit. So, Paul, uh, this is Paul. Saul asked specifically for that woman who is negative, a woman who is a medium. And um, he goes to inquire of her. Let, let's go to the story and continue. So Saul disguised himself, take note, Saul disguised himself and put on other clothes. So he, he stripped himself of the kingly clothes that he was supposed to have had on himself. And he went and two men with him, the number of agreement, two men with him. And they came to the woman by night, oh, by night, not even by day, no light, no illumination, by night. And he said, please conduct a sinians for me and um, bring up for me the one I shall name for you. Then the woman said to him, look, you know what Saul has done, how he has cut off the mediums and the spirits from the land. Why then do you lay a snare for my life to cause me to die? And Saul swore to her by the Lord. Everything seems to be going down, not up. Even the medium swore, Saul swore, swore by the name of the Lord, saying, as the Lord lives, no punishment shall come upon you for this thing. This woman said, who shall I bring up for you? And he said, bring up Samuel for me. When the woman saw Samuel, he cried out with a loud voice. And the woman spoke to Saul, saying, why have you deceived me for you are Saul? And the king said to her, do not be afraid. What did you see? And the woman said to Saul, I saw a spirit 
ascending out of the earth. So he said to him, what is his form? And he said, an old man is coming up and he is covered with a mantle. And Saul perceived that it was Samuel. He stooped with his face to the ground and bowed down. Now Samuel said to Saul, why have you disturbed me by bringing me up? And Saul answered, I am deeply distressed for the Philistines make war against me and God has departed from me and does not answer me anymore, neither by prophet nor by dreams. Therefore, I have called you that you may reveal to me what I should do. Then someone said, why do you ask me, seeing the Lord has departed from you and has become your enemy? And the Lord has done for himself as he spoke by me. For the Lord has called the kingdom out of your hand and given it to your neighbor, David. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. Um, let me stop the reading and let's go into the principle. You know the story already. Okay, so this thing keeps flipping more in there. So it's a long story, but let's look at two sources of building, two sources of building. The first thing I want us to take note of is the building must be pulled down upon from the supernatural. We must discover design out of God, dimensions of design, architecture and genesis, innovations in politics, economics, technology, social dynamics in the arrangement of life must not be by our good ideas. It must be birthed by heaven. We must receive it from God because one of the areas of the ecclesia is going to be this expression that we will see which speaks about bringing the government of God into social impact and all. How then do we do it? Do we do it because we have good ideas? Secondly, the negative way for building is what we saw Saul did. And I just want to touch on that in the next five minutes and then I'm done. It is about pulling things up from the earth, the very belly of the earth, the satanic realms the very belly of the earth. We are seeing a situation, a condition where the silent mode of an inaccessible heaven existed. And why and what contributed to this position? And who is sought in this matter? That he goes abandoning God and reaching into the realm of spirits and mediums. Friends, we want to underscore a very strong character and nature of God. It's called the mercies of God. It is renewed every morning. It is hinged on his faithfulness. It's unbendable. It's like a bar of steel. It will happen in the rain. It will happen in the storm. Even if we have missed it in any way, the Bible says that his mercies are new every morning. And that we can return to the father and rediscover. But Saul never did that. Who is Saul? Saul is deeply enshrined in witchcraft. And if we say wizardry and necromancy, he is deep enshrined in witchcraft. His heart is pre-directed towards it. Who is Saul? Saul is this disobedient fellow who is disobedient to the very divine edict of God. That explicit command that God gave over humanity 400 years, not 400, 400 years, that the children of Israel were going to be found in Egypt, they are going to come out and God entered into covenant um, and declared his very intent, even in the book of Exodus, when Israel had stepped out and that this um, covenant was going to stand and the Amalekites were going to be totally wiped off. God vowed that he was going to war with the Amalekites. Saul is that one who does not recognize an eternal decree. Who is the Saul? Saul is very grand. 
and successful in the eyes of all. While fueled behind him or behind the scenes are sheep bleating and Agag still alive, incomplete obedience. It flows from the very first point. Where God says that I'm destroying all of Amalekites and I'm at war with them, Saul ignores that command. Saul's ministry is dotted by his impetuousness rather than a deliberate, strategic thoughtful, uh, thoughtfulness that is hinged on eternal purpose. I call you as Samuel. In fact, I sought the Lord by dream and Urim and Tumim and the prophet and none of those things happened. So I come to call you out of the realm of necromancy. This guy is full of haste. You remember the story where um, he, Samuel showed up late than expected and this guy was already trying to sacrifice. His life is dotted by haste, impetuousness, rather than a very deliberate, strategic, thoughtful action. That is hinge on eternal purpose. Saul, he keep pulling things from the very belly of the earth. Saul is that leader I describe as a javelin tossing leader, seeking to wipe off the next generation instead of contributing to their development. He throws the javelin to, to, to pin David to the wall and David had to escape twice. This is all we are seeing. This is the heart from which he builds. We don't want to be there. That is why we are painting it real. Saul disguises himself. He loses his real identity to engage the process of pulling down from the very realm of witchcraft, the belly of the earth, necromancy, the realm of death. And that if we are going to abandon the will of God, then it's of necessity that we undo our own identity. That is how serious it is. It's like air to our survivor, the will of God. Our identity is like air to our survivor. We need to not to disguise ourselves and not to go down the path of darkness to pull from the belly of the earth. Pulling up from the earth-based source is what Saul does. His life, um, uh, life that erupts from the soul, the very uh, status, education, my name, my money, these things don't build it. Rather, we must learn to pull and look to heaven and pull from, the, from beyond the surround. Saul was engaging in the process of activating something that is past, irrelevant and dead. And that has no capacity to drive the purpose of God forward and to bring about a new civilization of the ecclesia. The reference point of an ecclesia does not exist in this earth. Friends, thank you so much. Thank you for staying on with all the challenges. Let's get talking. Kevin, thank you for really, really being great, being a great help. Yes, Mark, it's so good to be on um, here. I mean, this is just what we need, um, just what I need. I'm so grateful about just to see Saul and the human part of him that messes up and you know uses his own discretion by not obeying God and following him thoroughly. And you know, I just thank God for his redemption. I really do. I thank God for giving us an opportunity to get this thing about the ecclesia right and to bring our heart position before him in a very pure way. And uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm very, very grateful. There were so many things here about refounding that, uh, that, that, that jump out. I mean, the, the issue of looking at Christ again as the foundation. Um, if the foundations are removed, where should the, what, what, what can the righteous do? Because the righteous are really a foundational people. The righteous are really a foundational people. And so um, I think there's more here to discover. There's more here to look at. And uh, there's a lot here to do. So Mark, I wanna thank you so much for this presentation here. And uh, it's, just, it's just great being here, it really is. Thank you. Beautiful, Kevin. Thank you so much, Kevin. Thank you so, 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 so much. Your thoughts, friends, what 
Is the Lord speaking to your heart? What did you hear? What is the Lord reaching after? And let me also mention, I'm going to share the slide with uh, all of you. This particular presentation, I'm going to share with everybody. So um, just cool down. I'll get it ready and send it. I'll send it via WhatsApp to you. Thank you. Mark. Okay, so some, yes, go ahead. This is Carolyn. I want to thank you so much for the word today. And there's so much to, um, to really digest and take in from what you said. And uh, if I may share a personal experience with, with the group, is that okay? That's fine, go ahead. This is life. Okay, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So um, I was married to one who was very much like Saul. Uh, I'm no longer married to him, but this is what I want to express to you. Um, the healing process uh, that I am currently going through, you have been a part of it, whether known or unknown, but I want to let you know that. And uh, God has begun some very uh, deep healing within me because uh, the witchcraft that and the warlockery that uh, I have that I've kind of been uh, not party to, but the effects of it's what I want to say. Mm. And so, um, and so uh, the refounding of what God is doing. Um, I, I love how you entered into the conversation and the study of if the fact what what is what what are the righteous to do? And so I hadn't seen that scripture and the word of the Lord in that way. Uh, you talked about how it was who was it posted to? Who was who is that statement posted to? And so I um, that has certainly been something that I've been chewing on while you've been talking. But uh, this this word today is uh, please, uh, if you will make uh, us privy to the uh, to the recording today and then also for last week's recording is what I requested before, if you don't mind, if you don't mind. And I realize you have things going on. And that's fine. Um, but uh, it's, it's reconsidering some things. It's looking at some things, the foundation of Jesus Christ and holding on to the foundation uh, that Jesus Christ has stand for us yeah. and me personally with white knuckles. And so I wanna thank you so much for, for today. Thank you for developing that from um, my statement last, last session. I'm grateful to you for this. And this is such a building thing in me in a place that I don't, and I thank God for it. And I thank you for making yourself equal to the spirit of God. Thank you so much. That's rich. That's really, really. Caroline. Thank you so much for sharing your heart, for sharing your experience. Um, one thing I believe is, um, okay, okay, this is serious. One thing I believe is that, um, you know, the scripture, one of the scriptures we read last week, which continues to linger in my spirit on my mind is this verse in Matthew chapter 18, the verse, um, 18 through 20. The message translation is very interesting the way it put it. It said, it said take me serious. It said, take this seriously. For whatsoever you say to one another is eternal. So we could be having this conversation and we are laughing, we are happy, but the reality is that 
We are swimming in the eternal dimensions of God, which is even beyond the things that we say. Because um, what you said, Carolyn, impacted me so strongly, even though I have known the scripture and we, we apply it to deal with several facets of issues. It becomes so real that I am a righteous man, a righteous woman. And the very basics and the foundational issues I have ignored. Let me, I'm getting a bit, a bit aggravated and provoked um, um, even now. In several ways, even believers, we get latched on onto something we call high truth. High truth. And we begin to abandon real basic issues of religion, religion in court. Real basic issues of life that we have engaged in Christ. And I think it is, it is about time that we return to the crust of the realities that exist. It is about time, for example, that people go back and even discover the issues of baptism, the biblical significance of baptism and what that thing has done inside your world and in my world. It is so real that we, we begin to embrace the issue of resurrection so powerfully, eternal judgment, that we begin to look at the very foundation issues of repentance, repentance and embracing faith. My, God is reaching out to all of us. I read a story and I'll, I'll chip in this and then allow any other person to, to come in. I read a story, it's an article. Kevin, I don't know if you also read it. It's about um, um, this guy who writes, who wrote a book called, um, he's called, he's called Mark, Malcolm Gladwell. He wrote a book, David and Goliath. There was this article Matik shared, how he rediscovered faith. He was brought up, I think, born in Canada, brought up by parents who were devout and serving God. And the brothers and I think the sisters, uh, the brothers were, I think, pursuing the path of ministry. He lost it totally and went wayward and left the things of God. But his rediscovery of the issues of forgiveness which led to him rediscovering the kingdom, the faith once again, was about this group of people, I've forgotten how they were called, how I think their daughter who got missing and they found her body after a few days and they will later discover that it's one of their neighbors who actually killed this girl. And when he got to interview the husband and the wife, he said there is no retribution to pursue because Jesus has forgiven and it is all gone, it is all done. It's all said and done. It's all said and done. And they were able to let go. May God give us the strength, the courage to be able to do the impossible for human that human beings cannot do. May God give us the courage and strength to do that. So I want to stop here. Let somebody speak to it. Let somebody speak to the things you've heard. We are in nothing a process that relates to pulling out of heaven rather than pulling out of the earth realm, out of the realm of necromancy, out of the realm of death. We are in nothing a process of life. So are you pulling out of the energies of your flesh? Just ask yourself. Are you trying to do Okay, go ahead. Claudia, go ahead. No, no, I, I couldn't hear the, the question. Okay, so I was just saying that I, you, me, are we trying to engage processes 
by pulling out of our flesh, our strength, I can do my knowledge, my religion, my organization, my finances, my status, the connections that I have. Am I trying to pull out of that to build? If you are in, I don't know about the US, I don't know about uh, Chile, I don't know about uh, um, uh, where Daniela uh, come from and, and all. But you, in my environment here, there is real competition. There is serious competition here. And some of these father figures can make you pursue things wrongly when God is actually speaking something else to you. So there has to be the self-promotion. There has to be the application of the energy of the flesh. Some who have even lost it all are doubling in charm and necromancy and all to do ministry. How, you may ask, I may ask, how am I building a life? Job said, all the days of my life, I will wait until my change comes. How are we doing it? So over to you, friends. Who has some thoughts, who has something to share? Eunice, I saw Eunice connected to the call. There's a lady called Eunice. And she told me she was going to be on the call today. OK, Veronica, go ahead. Yeah, Mark, um, you see, uh, a couple of years ago, I asked someone in the church this question. And uh, she really didn't have any kind of um, concrete answer to give me. So I told her, I, I actually asked her that when Jesus was here, he did miracles, miracles which we don't see in the church today. Mm. We don't see, um, well, the healing of the sick. They will tell you to go and do some 21 days fast before God will heal you. And I didn't see Jesus do that. And before you know they can get any kind of healing or deliverance they will give them some go and drink this how many bottles of anointing oil <laughs> and all these kind of things so i asked her where is the power in the church mm. where is it if you cannot see the kind of power being demonstrated in the church today isn't isn't that a reason to think about what you are doing wrong mm. Mm what you are doing wrong i mean there's something that is going on that is not right and if it's not right god is not going to show up and so that led me to thinking because they want people to believe that what they are doing is the right thing then they go for other means of power mm. they go for other means of power to convince people that what they are actually doing is the right thing which um in essence you know it's 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 just uh what you were saying right now when uh, Saul went to consult me is to bring out um some more you see so i mean this is this is this is my experience you know a long time ago like years and years ago i just sat down to thing that where is the where are the miracles that jesus did he even said greater than these shall we even like i i don't see it in the church what is missing what are we doing wrong you know what are we doing that we are not supposed to do or what are we supposed to do that we are not doing mm. you see so i i even ask pastors these questions and they, they don't seem to give me any kind of reasonable answers you see, so that was when I got to know that, no, there is something wrong with their foundation. Something is wrong somewhere. And I, at that time, I just didn't know exactly what was wrong. But I knew that there was a problem somewhere. Otherwise, these things that Christ did, I mean, it should be evident. It should be very evident. It should be visible, you know, in the church, in a gathering of God's people. But we don't see them. 
we don't see them you know so i mean what you just said is just on point it's just on point that most pastors i don't know about other parts of the world but most pastors here because they want people to believe that you know their source is correct they go and get powers from other means you know they they go and get other means of powers and then bring it to the church and they so easily do it very very easily do it you know so that's my little contribution that's beautiful that's beautiful you know it's interesting here Eunice you're welcome unfortunately Eunice what happened to Eunice was she told she told she was going to register and when I scanned the registration uh, my mind didn't remind me of um, that she wants to be in the meeting so I totally forgot to send her the link. Um, sorry about that, Eunice. Next week, you are fully on board. Next week, you are fully on board. Ah. Enacting a process that comes from the belly of the earth. Friends, let's return to the through issues of the foundation. Is there somebody who unmuted? Okay. Um, we're going to just allow for some five minutes if there is any other interaction. Claudia, are you, uh, are you ready? I see you unmuted, go ahead. I was gonna tell you that Eunice was back. I mean, I have so many things in my mind, so many things that you said that just struck me that I don't even know what to share really, but I was gonna tell you that Eunice is back and I think she was unmuting her mic. Okay, that's, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Eunice, you're welcome. I hope she is not having any technical challenges. Mark, um, now that you, you asked the question about the flesh and when we're doing things in our own strength, mm -hmm. this week I was sharing with some friends about this because we were talking about Babylonians and, and the people that wanted to get, you know, when they built the tower, they wanted to get to God in a human way. Mm -hmm. And God was really, what's the opposite of pleased? Unpleased? No. Uh, Sorry about my English, guys. Uh, he was, uh, what's the opposite of pleased? He um, was upset. He was upset. upset. <laughs> he was upset. And, and, and of course, like, it's trying to do something for God without God is as bad as sinning. <laughs> it's as bad as, I mean, that's mm. the sin, really. Mm. That's really the sin is to do things in our human strength, trying to please God and trying to get to God and trying like the story with, from the Simpsons. This guy didn't know God, but he started talking about God, about the, the false God. And mm. like I, I, I can see that in, in I could see that in my own life before the Lord took me out of the religion I was in. Uh, we would go out to squares to talk to people, to preach and to evangelize with the best of intentions. Mm. But, you know, the best of in human intentions is not God. Mm. It's still human intention. Mm. And, you know, and for me, everything you said, the Lord was telling me about the same things that he's been telling me these past few weeks is about intimacy Everything is born out of the intimacy with him, out of the real relationship with him. Um, um, and you know, uh, if I can share some like a personal thing, but it's mm. scary. Sometimes it's scary 
uh, when you said that we need to have new beliefs, new perspective, new definition, new refounding, like the old foundations have to be destroyed. And I was like, yeah, it's true. But at the same time, I get scared because mm. I've already been wrong before. <laughs> mm. You know, mm. it's like, like, how can I know that what I will start <laughs> believing, the new thing that I will start believing mm. is not wrong, you know? Like, mm. what mm. is really the, like, the key? And, and mm. I guess I'm saying this, but I answer myself at the same time, is seeking him. The answer comes from him. It doesn't mm. come from men again, because if, mm. if it came from men, I would go back to the old system, which is mm. everything, mm. the filter for the will of God. In my case, I don't know if the community that the other brothers and sisters come from, but in that community that I was in, it, the, the will of God had to be filtered by the, they, they call it the discipler. I don't know if mm. you're familiar with that term. Is the mm. person like your father or mother, like your spiritual father or mother? Everything mm. has to be filtered by these people. And you know, you when you're like over 10 years in that system, mm. you start being afraid whether whatever you're listening is whether it's God's voice or not. Mm. You know, and sorry that I'm just just saying what I'm thinking, maybe without um much good, sense. I don't know. I don't know if I'm making sense or not, but but it's the, the scary the scary part is to what if I'm wrong again? <laughs> if I've been wrong bef before. Yeah. And, and that is in that moment, I guess God says, just be quiet and 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 be still, because our lives is in our our lives are in his hands. Mm. And and like like what you said today to me in, when we were talking in just keep on being with him and he will make things clear mm. Mm. but that's it <laughs> thank you mark yeah. thank you so much yeah. i thank god really for whatever for everything that he has put in your heart to share with us and yeah thank you so much that's beautiful that's beautiful. That's beautiful. You know what I enjoy about um, this meetings that we have here? It's just the liberty to bear your heart and to hear your own heart as well. Because as I teach about these things, I speak to my own self. As I talk about these things, I speak to my own self where you live in an environment and uh, ministry is defined within a certain manifestation and achievements. Where you walk with people like Father Figures, and I'm going to share a story, a very serious story in my life. I shared it on Sunday on a live broadcast during a prayer time. Uh, probably I'll share it again and drill further um, coming Sunday. But um, you have, I, I got into a relationship with um, certain father figures and my purpose for getting into this relationship was not because I wanted somebody to mentor me. I wanted to hear this and hear how the system works. My desire was not because I wanted somebody to mentor me. My desire was because I wanted a relationship I think Mark must have got kicked off again. Yes, it, Mark, it you know. off. Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Yeah. Okay. All right. So this will happen. I, I, uh, my wife and I. My wife was pregnant with Pinky at the time, and um, we didn't even know complications were setting in. So we went to this meeting. Um, one because, and this is very dangerous, right? And I'm going to say what is dangerous there. Sometimes we defer our discernments to um, certain quality people we have. 
But nowhere in the Bible does the Bible tell us to defer our discernment. It says you test all spirits. So one, I saw certain people that I trusted and I knew the, um, uh, the kind of values that they expressed around the place. So I was like, cool, let me go. Let me find myself there. Then when I got in there, my thinking was I'm going to find a relationship that enriches me. But the system is so toxic. The system is so set, it's so rigid. It has its own modus operandi that you cannot do anything about. And when you get in there, it sucks you in. And subsequently seeks to redefine you. So we got in there and um, we got into this friendship. And the more we were getting into this friendship, the more I was feeling empty, the more I was feeling confused, the more I was feeling depressed, the more I was losing my real self. I was doing everything to keep me in the way I know God and walk with God and um, chase after God. But eventually, one day, just, that was just last year, <laughs> not too far. That was just last year. I had stopped going to these meetings and I only watch their videos sometimes online. I have some on my phone. And so January 20th, last year, because I remember Gilda had just traveled to South Africa. Um, that same month, she was going to travel to South Africa, 25th of January. So January 20th, I was in prayer around 4 a.m. And I was in a trance saw myself heading somewhere um, where this ministry is located and it was an all night service. And um, I was all charged up. I'm going to attend this honor service. I'm going to catch impartation and all. Apparently I had left the major road and I was in a valley and ahead of me was a gulf. The next step, I was going to go deep down into that gulf and I'm lost. So I started struggling and pushing in this vision I was pushing to my right side because I could hear people talking from overhead. And I knew that the highway was there. As I was struggling and pushing, this vision got disconnected. And I heard a voice of God clearly. Do not pattern yourself after him. If you do, you will disappear from the earth. Nobody will know about you. That's... 20th of January 2020 was one of the clear defining moments in my life. So what did I do? I deleted all videos of that personality, removed every material and followed him on every social media platform. I literally killed the love for the witch in Endor. This person is not a witch, he's not a wizard. He's called of God. But God is saying, that pattern is dead and gone. Don't follow it. And I have to trust God enough. I saw it. It was so real to me, 4 a.m. Friends, we must not abandon our discernment to others, but we must bring about joint contribution to what God is building. And like Claudia said, staying with him, walking with him, trusting him. And when you come into that environment of the liberty of the saints, if your opinion is, is misaligned and the humility that you carry continue to stay with you, you would get adjusted, you would get corrected. I remember Timmy sharing um, last year, how um, people have to even be instructed by the leader to, to, uh, when, to, when to make love to their husband or their wives. 
that choice lies with the leader. All of these systems of abuse and lack of liberty. We want to step into God. We want to be free. The Bible says we have the mind of Christ. We want to embrace the mind of Christ. We want to bring about joint contribution to the process. So um, that is just a little story, something that defined me. Um, I would have been lost. I would have been preaching. But I don't know that I must not pattern myself. I didn't even know I was patterning myself after. And it's a good place for, for every one of us to reach out to God and say, God, like David said, if um, I search my heart, try my reins, try my thoughts, if there is any waywardness in me, lead me in the path everlasting. God bless you. Let's have one more comment and then we can, we can pray and we are done. Okay, yeah, I saw somebody raised, hand raised. Go ahead, Caroline, go ahead. Go ahead, Caroline. Your hand is raised. Caroline, can you hear me? Yes, I, yes, I can. Thank okay, you. Wonderful, Thank wonderful. you so much. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Wonderful. Um, if I can just address the uh, young lady that, if it's okay if that I address the young lady that just spoke and about her confusion and this with the old system mm -hmm. and uh, living in America, the same thing is happening. The same thing is happening uh, with, uh, with the old system and what God wants to present. And the scripture that the portion of the scripture that I am uh, and I'm seeing is, and it, he, he leadeth me beside the still waters. Mm. And the point of what this scripture is connecting me to this young lady is the old system is very strong mark you were talking about the old foundation that's very strong it has deep roots and for this young lady um the apprehension of taking the step of what God is opening up her too, as opposed to as opposed to the strength of the old system that He's trying to bring her out of, mm -hmm. and sometimes the residue that remains on us from the old system that makes us not trust the, what God is trying to bring us into. Mm -hmm the still waters that are calm that are not bustled mm. that don't threaten us because he wants us to trust him leading us beside the still waters mm. and the thing the betwixt that she is in with trusting what God is trying to bring her into and the old of what she's coming out of is what I'm addressing. Mm -hmm. And God wants her to trust him into leading her into the place that she she's apprehensive, maybe not willing to trust because the old is a strong system but he wants to bring her into the illumination of his light, of what, where he's taking her, of the ordering of her steps in him. And I wanted to share that. And um, thank you, Mark, for this space. Thank you Beautiful. so much for this word. Beautiful. 
And I thank God for. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you, Beautiful. Caroline. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Beautiful. You know, let me just um, one one thing dropped in here in my heart. One of the things that really guides us is this issue of Christ again. Nobody misses his voice. My sheep knows my voice. And any truth, any behavior, patterns, systems, expressions that are built ought to be built in a manner in which Christ is the very core. And so he says, I will build. So if you're listening to, say, a teaching, I personally, when I'm listening to a teaching, I look forward to hearing the voice of Christ in the midst of the teaching. The teacher or the person presenting may not mention Christ, 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 may not even make a reference to him of any of the types um, of his manifestation, the Old Testament. But if it is Christ in the midst of it, we hear you hear him clearly. You hear him and you hear him. Clearly. So listen to this scripture. John chapter 10, verse 16. It says, and other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring. And they will hear my voice. And there will be one flock and one shepherd. This thing must guide you. Tie that into first uh, Songs of Solomon chapter one. They said, my beloved, show me where you feed your flock. And noonday, and you rest them. So that I will not be like one that is veiled by the companions of Christ. Several companions of Christ have wreaked havoc. They've taught things that are purely traditions of men and of devils. And once you yield your heart to Christ, your discernment is there. If it is not of Christ, the alarm goes off inside you. You may not be a prophet, you may not be a prophetess, but the alarm goes off familiar spirit, familiar spirit, familiar spirit. You are left either at the point of discomfort and anger, righteous, holy anger rises within you against that truth. Suddenly questions are birthed within you, bringing you into the place of freedom. We truly want to be a people who have been freed by Christ in the manner in which he has done and want to walk in that liberty. It says, other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring. And they will hear my voice. They will hear my voice. God bless you. God bless you. If there's any other further comment, we want to pray. I love to pray. I love to pray. I love to pray in my meetings. Um, I've heard people share all kinds of testimonies in times of prayer. And so you want to connect to this moment with faith. You want to connect to faith, connect this moment with faith. Reach out in the spirit of faith. Embrace what God have done. I think it was in the early conversation, somebody said, or whether I don't know if it was here last week. Our minds may not be able to grasp it, but our heart says yes. And so we pray from that place. Father, several questions in our, in our, in our human capacity we ask. Several ideas popping up in our minds. Things that we are afraid of because of the serpent that beat us yesterday. And because of the scars that have been left upon our minds, upon our emotions, upon our lives, because of the ravages that have been done to us. Lord, we ask right now, let your fire burn. I'm just going to pray in the spirit for just a moment. 
Mando sa di brigada raba. Rodi brizi kiti kada raba su de de de. Labra ha kata da 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 be su gibra ha da 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 ba. Leke praha dorobo zikiti de 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 be sabra ha dorobo. La kapada do zikiti de de be shakata da ba. Mozi bra de 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 be zoke praha de de de. Man dorobo sabra kata di di bi zikato. Leke praha do zibra ha dorobo shikiti kiti. Rada da 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 ba zike praka da 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 ba. Mondo robo sabra ha da 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 ba La kaparo koto si bra da 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 ba zugi bi di algo de. Mando robo robo zike praka da 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 ba suri di di di. Mando robo zike te kapra da 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 ba. Mato praha de 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 supra kata da 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 ba. Lord, we let our hearts out to you. Ma prado, you know us more than we do. You know what the things we are involving, the things we are building. Lord, today again we reach out to foundational issues. Ma parado zipra katarada zopra handarada kopra darada bazuki tiki 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 Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Feel us and feel wherever we are right now. Holy Spirit, come. Lose us from every bondage of yesterday, every fear. Let the scars be gone. Let a renewed understanding begin to hit us. Like Apostle Paul prayed for the church in Ephesus, so I pray right now for us in this meeting and those that are listening and watching this video even now. Let the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of revelational knowledge in you, God. Let it be granted in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, cause the Amen. eyes of understanding to be enlightened that we might know what is that hope, what is that glorious riches of your inheritance in the saints, what is that hope of calling. Lord, let each and every individual on this call watching this video have a personal revelation of Christ, riveted upon the eternal realities of who you are. That no man, no system, no teaching, no religion can pluck from us but can only continue to grow and redound unto eternal abundance. Father, you are God among us. You know every individual on this call and what you seek to do in their world and in their life. And what you seek to break off our world and let, and let us lose to discover your very will that is like fresh breath to us. Oh Lord, let your hand go out right now. And as we say, Holy Spirit, come. Yes, let it be to us so. Now let the spirit of joy engulf us because we are finding you. Let the shackles of the soul and the power of the flesh and the building capacity out of our strength 
and the process of engaging that which is old and past and dead and has no relevance in building the new. Let the traditions of men be broken. Let demands that have been placed upon us by leaders be broken. Lord, let that principle of liberty be released among us. Thank you, Lord. We command it and we declare it done by your spirit and your power in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now, just one more comment, and this is the comment. One of the very key things that must happen in any apostolic environment is the principle of liberty. You are free to choose where to go, whom to associate with, wherever you ought to be, but remember that you are responsible. Therefore, because you cherish the investment of Christ in you, you will not be found as one that is veiled by the companions of Christ. He will guide you and I in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Amen. Kevin, God bless you, sir. God bless you, Mark. A joy to be on. You, you really, really been a backbone. You carry CPC wherever you go. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Thank you, man. <laughs> God bless you, sir. I'm so, so, so enriched. You know, before we leave, Kelvin and I were, were having a chat. Was it last night or this morning? I can't remember. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're talking about how uh, Kelvin was telling me about how he's learning so much from me. And I'm also like, I'm jealous. I'm learning so much from you. And you are enriching me in every way, in every step. And um, I just want to publicly say this. If I have not said that before, I really, really cherish you, Kelvin. And I cherish everybody on this call. You have no idea what your comments on the call, the expression of your heart, what it says to me, what it ministers to me. How even last week after the call, I couldn't sleep. I never told you, Kelvin, I couldn't sleep. Wow. The atmosphere from the call was so strong and rich. I found myself praying throughout the night and just praying and reaching. I just want to be with the Lord. Something is happening to all of us. Something is happening among us. Let's cherish the journey. God bless you. Amen. Thank Amen. you so much, Mark. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. God bless you, Mark. The Lord be with you. Thank you so Amen. much for your call. Amen. Thank you so much for what you're doing, even for this small group. Thank you so much. I'm blessed and healed because Amen. of you. You have no idea. Mm, 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 mm. The reason be well, why we stand. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Caroline. No, I was just saying be well, everyone. I just, hey. my best wishes hey. to everyone. Great, great. Thank you, Caroline. Great. Did you all realize I shared, I shared the, the presentation? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I've sent it out yeah. to those uh, on WhatsApp as well. And uh, Caroline, I'll send it across to Kelvin. You would have it. All right. Always feel at home. I'm grateful, Mark. I'm grateful. Thank you so much. The Lord be with you. you and your family. God bless you. God bless you. Ah, we need to go, Kelvin. If we do not close this meeting, we will be here till tomorrow. I know. Okay. <laughs> you know Thank what? Thank you, everybody. Have a good evening. Hey, Claudia. God bless you. Thank you, and brother. thanks for always sharing your heart. Mm -hmm. Good night, Thank everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.